What's up, everybody? Big Herc 916. You can tune in to another edition of Fresh Out. Make sure you hit the subscribe, like, share the channel. Um, you know, we've been kicking around some military stories, and um, I got here for me, my homeboy Chad, you know, did time in the Navy. And uh, this man, um, it, man, he's got some crazy stories and just some good game for you guys out there, you know, uh, having questions about serving the country. Um, Chad, um, what did you do while you were in the military? Like, what, what did you um, focus on or specialize in while you were in? So, uh, when I took my test, you call it ASVAB test, it's your uh, entry exam. They want to kind of see where you're, where you're set. Uh, I apparently scored really well in coding. And so automatically they're sending me like, oh, we want to send you to this IT school. They want to send you to this cryptologist school. Oh, wow. and, and I'm just thinking like, man, that sounds like a lot of school. I'm not really interested in that. I just want to get out there and have a good time. I said, oh, man, you got firefighter? So I'm like, I want that. I want to be a fireman. Well, little did I know, it's an undesignated rate. So when you take an undesignated rate, you just get some little basic common core engineering training, and then they send you to a command, and you're the bottom of the barrel. Oh. You know, but you have open access to any other rate if so, your department decides to let you, you know, explore those options. Uh, so I went in as that, uh, you know, spent some time doing some engineering, which was really cool. Uh, you have uh, birthing separated by departments, ops, uh, supply, engineering. Well, engineering, they call it snipes. And it was a really cool birthing to be in because it was all the roughnecks. It was all the bad boys, uh, you know. And a lot of people would try to walk through our birthing. And that was a big no-no. And everyone knew that. Even when we were sleeping, lights were out. If someone crossed into our doorway to make it through a passageway <laughs> through our birthing, you'd hear. <laughs> and that meant someone was in that wasn't supposed to be. Everyone jumped out of their rack, tied that dude up, beat the shit out of him, oh, and sent him on his way. And uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, I, did, uh, I got to do a couple of, um, you know, while we were out in the Middle East. South China Seas, uh, we went a lot of places. We would take this small boat out and uh, SEAL team would go on one side, we'd go on another side and we we're supposed to board these ships that weren't answering radio calls. And you know, you're all pumped up and going, oh, you're excited about this. And you get out there on this little boat in the middle of the ocean, there's no land days in either direction oh, of shit. you. And you don't realize how crazy it is until you're on this little boat and you don't see the wave until the face of the moon hits it oh and, and, and it's just it was intense it was scary uh you know i think about some of those things and and, and nowadays I, I just wonder if i would even be willing to do the things that i was willing to do then now when you were out doing those patrols i know uh you know because i know people in the coast guard and they used to do patrols off the coast of mexico and they tell the ships to pull over and they try to outrun them and shit, and they're drug running ships, and they, you know, eventually these dudes, they have to shoot the, shoot, the, shoot the motors out and board the ships and stuff, and they would have, you know, stuff in there. Did you guys ever have any crazy boardings when, you know, these guys didn't want to stop, and they had stuff down there trying to get away from you guys, or? We had uh, one instance, uh, some of the guys that were on the ship with me, I was on the Cushing DD-985. Uh, oddly enough, that ship, a lot of guys went to a lot of different commands, but for whatever reason, there was a a connection between the people that were on that command so we have reunions and all type of stuff like that uh we had pulled into guam and we were on our way to do a western pacific uh tour so we hit a bunch of middle eastern and um, you know australia indonesia all over the place mm. uh and we had some engine problems so we were stuck not stuck like it was a terrible place guam is beautiful but we were in guam and we had to get some work done on our ship and at the time the uss cole was in the position that we were supposed to be in and uh, I don't know if you guys know, but the USS Cole was attacked by a small boat and it blew a hole in the coal and, and killed and injured, you know, people on that ship. And we were supposed to be there. Uh, luckily, we were not. But, uh, you know, there was, uh, there was quite a bit of things that happened. And I don't know if it was more crazy, the stuff that happened at sea or the stuff that happened on board. You know, there was a lot of stories about our ship being haunted. Uh, you would see ghosts. Uh, while I was on the ship, we lost two guys, one drowned, and another one died uh, while taking a shower from a, from a steam leak. So oh, when we, uh, when the, the damage control team got into the birthing, uh, one of my buddies, Ryan, had scarred his back pretty good from the burn, but it was able to get out. The other guy, we couldn't identify him because he was burned. Oh. So they assumed that he was a, a, a black man because he was charred, but in actuality, he was a a uh, white man and, and just burn himself to death and it was yeah. uh, tragic yeah man i mean i know there's you know all kind of crazy stuff that happened like the accidents and even like sometimes when they're deploying um you know uh 
Marines and you guys are, you know, transporting and, you know, accidents with helicopters and all kind of crazy stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's all type of risk being involved like, when you're out there. But um, like you said, man, you're, you're young and, you know, you're just out there. So you don't really think about a lot of things you do when you're young. In retrospect, now you're like, damn, that was pretty crazy, man. It was, yeah. And then in 2002, I mean, you could YouTube this on our ship. We're out in the Middle East. And uh, so weird because these helicopters would land on our fantail right on the flight deck, actually above the fantail. And as they're coming down, I mean, you got rough seas going this way, the wind going all over, and, and somehow the helicopter would land so smoothly. And I'm like, wow, this is impressive. Well, when you're out in the Middle East, anyone that's been there knows that the water is like glass. It's so smooth out there. And here comes this helicopter coming in to land and all the flight deck you know, personnel are standing there waiting for these people to come in, you know, going through the motions. It's just another day, a routine thing. And somehow, some way, it caught some sort of gust of wind and, and hit the edge of the flight deck and then went off, you know, but uh, pretty scary situation. Damn, man. Yeah, yeah you don't, um, <clears throat> you know, people here, don't, they don't have no idea, man, as far as like what you guys experience out there. And then you come back and, you know, a lot of times, you know, we don't hear about any of this stuff. And that's why I want to get it on the channel to share just to give an insight because, you know, you know, being in the military, you know, there's some what have, some people have a negative connotation because they don't really understand you know and they're thinking oh i'm a goon i'm a thug and it's like dude you know you're sitting here in the penitentiary and you're doing this stuff and you're you know you're, you're thinking that's glorified and then you say i don't want to work for the man over here but then you're looking at like opportunity at the end of the day if you play your cards right you got the gi bill you got you know housing you know people don't think about that and if you don't use your gi bill your kids can go to college yeah. you know so there's all these different things that you could take advantage of and if you're not doing that anyways it's like why not travel i mean dude like you had all those countries i mean how else would you have been able to do that as a young person to at least get some worldly experience so when you come back you have a better idea of who you are absolutely yeah you know i uh i went and before you go in you know they cater to you they treat you like a king up until you get on the bus that takes you to boot camp <laughs> And so you're like, man, that was so nice. I yeah, think yeah. I made a really good decision. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you start pulling it. I was in Chicago in January and I left from Cali. So I'm wearing some slacks, a short sleeve polo. It's like 10, 10 below oh, zero, you know, it's freezing shit. out there. And as soon as we pull in, it starts looking dreary. It starts like, getting like, more and more yeah. blizzard like. And we get in, all of a sudden, guy gets up, get the hell off the bus. Why do you think that? I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. But, you know, all in all, at the end of the day, I think it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Uh, looking back, you know, there's certain things that I, I wonder what ifs. But uh, I'm also very grateful because it taught me a lot. It taught me how to be a man. It taught me how to rely on myself. And, and there are a lot of uh, positive benefits that come from it, especially being a cow vet. You know, I get, uh, and my kids could go to any cow state for free. You get help with your uh, home loans. You get all sorts of assistance. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot to be said about that because you don't really get that from a normal job. You definitely don't get it from prison. No, no, prison, you get out, you got a felony, you got a strike, and really you're, you're, you're a society outcast. I mean, I'm fortunate I turned it around and used it as a benefit and, um, you know, didn't come out here with a victim mentality, but for a lot of people, they don't have that. And you get in prison, man, you get caught in the, the politics, the gang stuff, the, you know, using drugs and all this other stuff. So there's a lot of things you can get caught up in where at least in the military, you, you know, you get caught up in something. It, it could be possibly some, you know, you're exposed to something more beneficial because you are a product of who you're around. At least if these people have a different mindset, it's not like it's going to be, you know, criminal activity. It's more of, you know, hey, I, I mean, I'm thinking about future of this or that. And you got, you know, I'm quite sure you found um, quite a bit, you know, quite a few mentors in there. People who, OGs, like, you know, officers, different people who would like, you know, sit down and have little chats with you. you yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I grew up uh, not really having much time with my father. So like you said, uh, there was one man in particularly, I, I had a anger issue. Uh, I got in a lot of fights. I didn't know how to deal with things. Uh, with my mental, you know, I usually just went and resorted to violence. Uh, and uh, so they had me go speak to this uh, Catholic priest, also an officer in the military. Uh, you know, so right away you have that difference between enlisted and officers and you're a separate entity, so to speak, like they're above you or something. Uh, as soon as I walked in, their name was Father McCormick, tucked his rank away and, uh, and let me talk to him like a man. So I unloaded on him. And that was one of the first times that I had some sort of, uh, you know, like a positive male that 
I mean, allowed me to be my emotional, emotional, vulnerable self, you know, where I didn't have that, or I didn't feel like I had that before. And, you know, I, I think uh, as, as males, and, you know, you don't want to show vulnerability, I feel that's very important because I had that same experience, man, because I didn't have a dad either, so I never got to, uh, like, really, you know, open up to deal with a lot of the stuff you're dealing with as far as trying to figure out your identity because, you know, a lot of kids run around, and you know they're doing this stuff, sagging, doing this. They're trying to, they're really imitating f- feminine traits, trying to be masculine, not realizing that if a man told them certain things, they wouldn't act like that because you're acting out of emotion rather than as a man with rationale. That hey man, you know, you do this, you don't react like this. Like you know, women have a tendency to to act out of emotion. Men, we're supposed to think about a thing and then say, okay, what's the best decision? You know, and, and you have somebody to kind of put you, set you straight. So if you have two or three generations of no men, you know, then now you have a man. He, he don't even know what it's like to be a man because he's never been raised by a man. His grandma, mom, auntie, you know, hopefully he had an uncle or something in there. So I know my experience came from when I was in the pen, having an older guy kind of break stuff down to me and ask me like, you know, dude, why do you act like this? Why do you do this? Why do you think you did that? And I never thought about it, you know, because like you said, I would you know, wild out and do stuff and, and, you know, kind of try to be this person. But in all actuality, it was a, 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 dis, a dysfunctional behavior, you know, and I didn't realize it because I never really sat back and thought about it like, wow, you know, what am I doing? You know, even though I thought, you know, I was trying to balance it and live two lives, you know, so, you know, it's pretty crazy, man. But I think, you know, like you said, having you know, being exposed to somebody who, if you ha- if you haven't really had a father figure, which you know the military, when you, you're around some of these some of these G's or some of these older guys, and they can kind of you know sit sit you down, man. I think that makes a difference, man, as far as just growing up, you know. Makes a big difference, yeah. I mean, like you said, uh, you know, a lot of those traits that we we had, you know, were also self destructive. And and at the end of the day, you can have a mentor, whether you decide to listen to him, is on you. So really, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's it's your choice. You know, you gotta you gotta make that decision that I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna be better than I was the man yesterday. You know, whether you take that advice or not. Hey, and there you have it, Big Kirk nine one six, fresh out, kicking over my man Chad. Stop walking around with a crusty butt, smelly ball sack, and a funky hoo ha. Big Kirk said, "Wash that ass." Pick you up a t-shirt at freshhouseseries.com.